Okay, we're going to start with the digestive system. We've got the rat's mouth open. I will point out the hard palate. Dropping into the soft palate. Following the path of food down. You may or may not be able to see this little tiny esophagus. And it shows the epiglottis. And I'm afraid I only have one hand because I'm filming with the other hand. piece of tissue right here. It's tiny. It's tiny in the rat. There's just a little piece of tissue, a little flap sticking up right there. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. That's the epiglottis covering the glottis, which is the entrance to the pharynx and the larynx. Let's talk about the larynx. Here is the larynx. Sorry, the epiglottis is the entrance to the larynx. There's the larynx, it's hard. And inside that would be the vocal cords um, known as the vocal folds and to either side of them, the vestibular folds. If we trace that down, we can just make out there's some little rings of cartilage through here. Let's see if we can zero in on that. See there's little rings right there. That's the trachea. And the trachea is going to follow on down to the lungs. When you open the rat and look in, after you cut through the chest wall, you'll see some tissue sitting on top of the heart. And this is the thymus gland. The thymus gland. And I'm going to reflect it back so we can look down. And we can see some of the branching of the brachiocephalic trunk and the um, the jugular veins and uh, next to them the arteries but that's not what our video is on today so we're going to just go ahead and look here's the heart there's the heart you can see a little tiny left auricle right there there's the left auricle at the end of my pointer, there's the left auricle. We've got a lung. There's a left lung, one of the lobes. The right lung, one of the lobes. If I lift up the heart and look underneath, we could go behind the lungs and find the inferior vena cava. But let's look at the next thing we can see besides the ribs themselves. We can see the diaphragm. I've cut the diaphragm away from the skin. The diaphragm separates the upper and lower, or cranial and caudal, in this case, cephalid with a rat, cephalon, and caudal. But with humans, we would say the thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity. Here is the liver. There's the liver. These are the lobes of the liver. We've got a right lobe and a left lobe, and an inferior lobe, and a far left. One of these is the caudate, one is the quadrate. Here is the stomach, right below the liver on the rat's left side. Notice the liver is taking up most of the space on the right side, just as it would in a human. Underneath the stomach to the inferior is actually a portion of the pancreas, but it's been pulled away trying to expose the spleen which is just to the far left of the stomach. It looks like a finger hanging down next to the stomach on the left. We'll cut open the stomach in another video, and we'll do that in class. But for right now, we just need to look at the intestines coming off of the stomach. So the first part that comes off of the stomach is the small intestine divided into the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Here is the first part, so this is the duodenum, 
do it in them. It's short. If we look at most of this stuff that's curled up kind of on its side like that, anytime there's a pin just in the intestines, in the small intestines, we'll call that jejunum. Jejunum. And the jejunum is going to run into the ileum, and the ileum is going to run into the cecum of the large intestine. So the ileum is the last part of the small intestine. We need to trace it out. And the easiest way to do that is to find this big thing here. This is the cecum. This is the beginning of the large intestine. We just need to look underneath it and we'll see in the back where the small intestine is running into it. Can you see? I'm gonna make this simple. Can you see this is small intestine, large intestine. And this is right where they meet in the middle. Small intestine since it's the last portion it has to be the ileum and then this is the first portion of the large intestine the cecum and we're going to see right next to the cecum this large intestine is this thing that's sticking off by itself let's find out right it. here it is there it is it's just by itself that's the appendix the thing that's hanging off the cecum so one more time we've got the Ilium, small, 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 all the way into big. So the cecum is here, runs into the cecum. I've got ilium, cecum, appendix. Where they meet is this little portion called the ileocecal valve. It's just the doorway between the ilium and the cecum. If I lift this up, I can trace the large intestine. I could just follow it. Eventually, it's going to end and this long tube running vertically down the back on a posterior portion right along the spine, down the posterior portion, and it's gonna disappear into a pouch right there. It's gonna disappear into that hole. It's going down and it's gonna exit at the anus, which is hidden there it is, right above the scrotum. So we would say this was the descending colon, the descending colon, which after it disappears, you cannot see it because I'm not going to pull it out, but after it disappears into the pouch of Douglas, it's going to be the uh, rectum and finally the anus. Okay, let's look at one more thing. There's a kidney. I've pulled it out of the fascia. You guys know that as the retroperitoneum. You can see a little bit of it left over. It's this membrane, right? So if I expose the kidney, I can see I dug out just a little bit, excavated this little tube running down here, and that's the ureter, the left ureter coming off of the left kidney. If we follow the left ureter down towards where you saw the exit, the descending colon, you'll see these two little guys right here. One, two. Those are the seminal vesicles responsible for the majority of semen output in the rat. There are other, um, there are other glands in here, but I'm just going to show you the seminal vesicles because they're easy to see. Now the seminal vesicles in the male, uh, in the male human and in the male rat, both the uh, urinary system and reproductive system share an exit, which is the penis. So everyone is heading towards the penis, or everything is headed towards the penis here. Well, let's find the bladder, since we said that it's shared. The seminal vesicles are part of the reproductive system right in front of it, just so you can get the relationship, is the bladder. This little tiny thing right here, it's got a little ligament on top where it's attached to the penis. Now I've cut away the muscle actually engorges and lifts the penis during an, uh, an erection, and this is the corpus uh, cavernosum, the two corpus cavernosi, but we want to look underneath that for the corpus spongiosum, and it's just this little bit, how am I locating all this? You can see the exit right here, the penile urethra, uh, you can actually feel, you can feel the corpus spongiosum right there, the actual band. What I'm what I want to emphasize, though, is that the ureter, the ureter from the bladder, is headed towards 
I'm sorry, the ureter from the kidney is headed towards the bladder. So if I move the seminal vesicle, let me see if I can see it. I'm trying to pull it out right there. Can't see very well. Anyway, it is headed towards the bladder. It wants to join the bladder right there. But you'll notice there are some things going down below. And I've taken the testicle out of the scrotal sac. So there's the testicle itself, surrounded uh, on top and bottom by a C-shaped organ called the epididymis. It's this guy right here. This little guy. So as it curls around the testes itself, the sperm come out of the testes and they're not quite fully matured yet and enter the epididymis. And eventually, that's the head of the epididymis, eventually they make their way down to the tail of the epididymis which becomes the vas deferens. You've probably heard of a vasectomy. So there's the vas deferens. Vas deferens goes up, up, up behind the bladder. You can see this white tube here. This is the vas deferens, dives down behind the bladder and it too has an entrance into the penis. So it depends on what the rat is doing. If it's reproducing, then it's going to use the uh, sperm that are in this tube, this vas deferens. If it is urinating, it's going to use the liquid from this bladder. just depends. Um, the prostate is just below the bladder. It's this tissue right here, just below the bladder. The prostate. Right? And the pl prostate pretty much has sort of a valve that shuts off the bladder during reproduction, during ejaculation. And the rest of the time it's open and it, um, it also secretes a fluid into the semen for use uh, to lubricate and hydrate the sperm on their way out. So it has a dual, a dual function. All right, I'm gonna put the testicle back into the scrotal sac so you can see what it looked like before. Okay. Right. So that's how we'll leave him.